When pulling an espresso shot, there is a lot of information from a bottomless porta filter. And so one of the areas I think is most interesting is when the filter is covered completely by coffee. This is a great indicator of uh, how the shot is forming. So in general, you want the filter to cover um, approximately at the same time. Usually the edges will cover first and then the center. And sometimes if you grind too fine, it'll all cover very slowly. Um, and if you grind too coarse, it'll all cover quickly, but your shot will be garbage because the water will go through so, so fast. So uh, a few years ago, I was looking at some data for my lover machine, trying to figure out when uh, is the best time to end pre-infusion. And I focused in on um, uh, the time to cover the filter. And one of the challenges is uh, that you have to pay attention and be able to adjust your shot as you go. So I had normally been doing a pre-infusion between 10 and 30 seconds, um, and it was very arbitrary. So I had a bunch of data and I went through videos and annotated how long it took the filter to cover and how long the shot took. And, and then I was able to compare it to my um, metrics. So one of the other metrics I used uh, back then was the time to get to 10 milliliters. And so now the time I use is the, like, the time it takes to get to 10 grams of output, um, which is roughly the same. And usually my shot, uh, my basket is holding 20 to 22 grams of coffee. So 10 grams of coffee out is about half of the one-to-one -one ratio. And that's usually seems to be a good indicator in some ways. So I use that as a metric. Is this an interesting metric? What, what visually can I, I learn from any of these metrics to tell me when to end the shot? Okay, so I have a lot of plots here and they're in two large categories. One is extraction yield, and this is calculated using a measurement of total dissolved solids from a refractometer. And so this is telling you the efficiency of extraction. Your usual aim is between 18 and 22%. Um, and then final score is an average of uh, seven taste metrics. It's the standard that I've been using for the past few years, which includes uh, initial taste, uh, uh, richness or complexity, syrup or mouthfeel, sweet, sour, bitter, and aftertaste. Um, so higher is better. And I looked at both of these because they, they both give a little bit different of indication. Generally, um, final score is correlates to extraction yield. Um, it's not a 100% correlation, but it's around a 50 to 60% correlation, which is pretty good. So um, I plotted uh, pre-infusion time here, uh, time to cover, and pre-infusion minus the time to cover. Um, and uh, I, I just I plotted a linear line just to give a point of reference. And uh, pre-infusion alone doesn't there isn't much of a linear correlation. Same with um, time to cover in and of itself. However, pre-infusion minus time to cover is a little bit better. Uh, it, it could be a lot better. So if I focus in on those two, uh, there's this, uh, the longer the time to cover is, the, the, the you have a downward trend uh, and uh, an extraction yield. And then um, with pre-infusion, you, you also have a, a, a downward trend here. Um, so if we start looking at um, pre-infusion minus uh, uh, time to cover the filter, See a nice upward trend. Okay, so I reduced this data set to a more controlled data set in terms of ROS um, and time period because a lot of my uh, methods changed. Um, so this focused in on around 60 shots. And so these trends, they, there's a much more stable trend here, uh, especially for extraction yield. Um, Pre-infusion was difficult because pre-infusion was mostly constant. 
So it's hard to make a, a good trend there. So if we look at pre-infusion minus time to cover, uh, we get a, a better trend. And uh, we don't get as good of a trend for uh, the T10 time, um, which is okay. I was just looking for another metric to use. So I, I correlated, this is a large table. The, the main thing is I, I focused in on that, that black square and uh, this is a correlation table. So I'm correlating uh, the, all of these metrics to each other in an all versus all fashion. Uh, I only previously focused on the black box, but I tried a bunch of different things. I tried the inverse, I tried um, the, some combination of time to cover. Further down, I got to uh, time to cover divided by PI or PI divided by time to cover. And I was just trying to get a sense of, of where there's a high correlation. So uh, there's a lot of negative, high negative correlations here too. So um, you can see uh, right here, there's a there's a this really high negative correlation between uh, two metrics and they're both time-based. So it kind of makes sense. But we really want to focus in on um, these metrics over here. So we can focus on just these metrics. And uh, if, if I, I color coded these for high and low correlation, um, and you can be highly correlated in a negative way or a positive way. So I did distinguish because it doesn't matter. As long as there's a high correlation, it's a useful, useful metric. So time to cover at a much higher correlation. As you can see, extraction yield was correlated to final score. Um, by 0.61, which has is high, but not as high as it could be. Um, then uh, uh, T10 over over uh, uh, T. Which one is that? T10 over TCF has a high correlation, um, but I really want something actionable, and so I ended up with. Um, something closer to, if you look towards the bottom, you have uh, pre-infusion, PI, minus time to cover divided by PI. That had a much higher correlation. Or uh, just TCF divided by um, pre-infusion. So the inverse is true. So pre-infusion divided by time to, time to cover has a high correlation to extraction yield as well as the taste. So let's take a look at that. So uh, we, we looked at a few things here. So this is, you have, uh, extra, you have extraction yield on the top, final score at the bottom. A, um, you have uh, pre-infusion divided by total time. Then in the next column is total time to cover divided by total time. And then pre-infusion minus time to cover divided by total time. So we're seeing some good trends here. These are much better trend lines. Then if we really look at this uh, time to cover divided by uh, PI, we have a nice trend line here, it's very clear, and we're getting closer to something that's actionable. If we look at extraction yield versus PI divided by time to cover and final score for the same, we see that this kind of tops out at three, a factor of three. And uh, this is using a little bit more complex of a polynomial, um, but there is a diminishing returns for any metric like this. So I'm trying to get a better ballpark of if I have a visual cue like time to cover, how can I better understand um, when to end the shot? So then this gives us some clear indication. Every time I pull the shot, what can I do while I watch the shot? When can I end pre-infusion? And it's also not at time to cover. It's a little bit later. Um, so I, I hope this gives some helpful information in terms of how you can modify your shot in, in the middle of pulling your shot and how um, with all the variables going on, a little bit of modification and manual intervention is, is, can be very helpful.